Right then, welcome back to Breakfast Central on News Central on the Thursday. Yes, the 12th day of December 2019. Don't forget, you can always reach us right here on social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Not forgetting, uh, uh, well, watching us live on YouTube, newscentral.africa, and also log on to the website, newscentral.africa. Well, uh, you can also use the hashtag NC Breakfast Central to reach us right here in the studio. Let's go. Straight to another impact topic today, all about greenhouse farming. And when you think of farming, you think open fields and spaces where cattle and other types of you know, animals really are left really to roam. Well, uh, farming is not always associated with open fields, but uh, with greenhouse farming and uh, where plastic uh, cover structures that you know, allow the farmers to grow vegetables and fruits throughout the year via mechanically controlled temperatures and irrigation systems. Well, to really talk about more of this and the methods of all this, I'm joined by Patrick uh, Yokamu uh, uh, from Greenhouse Nigeria. Welcome, Patrick, to the show. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, for those who don't re really know what greenhouse farming is, tell us what is greenhouse farming. Okay, first of all, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so basically, greenhouse farming is just cultivating crops in an enclosed structure, mm -hmm. the enclosed structure being the greenhouse itself. Okay, so it's basically farming, enclosed farming. Yeah, 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 just farming in an enclosed structure. Right? Yeah. And then the enclosed structure itself is a greenhouse. Yeah, it's the greenhouse. Yeah. And uh, are there other technicalities to associated with the concept of greenhouse farming? Yeah, so the media te technicality with that would be mm. growing in a regulated climatic environment mm. where you can control the temperature, the humidity, and then, you know, irrigation. So you supply water to the root of the crop itself. Mm. Those are the basic technicalities involved in greenhouse farming. Yeah, because it's covered, so which means that you're not getting the natural air. So you got to, uh, is it, well, I call it provide air, airing? Um, no, no, not necessarily. So basically, the roof of the greenhouse is covered with polythene sheets. Mm. The, side, the side covering is with um, anti insect net mesh. Mm. So what you have is you have cross ventilation. Okay. But in the peak of the dry season, mm. you know, February, March, when it's really hot, we have like fanning systems that provide enough ventilation inside of the greenhouse. All right, and uh, we have a couple of greenhouse farms in Africa, including Nigeria. Absolutely. Uh, but how would, because, because you see many of these and you travel across Western Europe, you know, fields and fields of greenhouse fields and stretches long yeah. from Paris to Amsterdam to, you know, the outskirts of London. So uh, are we, um, have we really embraced it, uh, you know, in, in Africa? I would say maybe in the you know, last couple of years, mm. last five years, yeah, you know, we're starting to embrace the idea. But it's capital intensive. You know, like you said, in Europe, maybe it's widely accepted because it's quite cost effective. Mm. By the time you're shipping those technologies from there in here, you add up the cost and, you know, it's, mm. quite, it's quite expensive for the average farmer. Uh, what, 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 what do you think is the major, you know, when you look at structures like these, you're talking about, okay, there has to be some way of... Uh, powering, you know, electricity or what have you uh, to run with the equipment because is it that really technological, uh, you need so much te technological advancement for greenhouse farming? No, it looks like, you know, it's already gone mainstream over there. So what's, what's our major challenge? Is it the technology or the power or the uh, or infrastructure? Um, so it, it's a combination of both. For mm. example, the polythene sheets, which is basically the roof mm -hmm. of the greenhouse, um, there's no company that produces polythene sheets in Nigeria. So that's number one. The side covering, which is the inside net mesh, mm. there's no company that produces it. So what happens is you have to ship in these things into the country. Mm. And that adds a lot of cost too. Same thing with the irrigation equipment, okay. humidifiers, okay. all these things have to be shipped in. So it, it, it's really, uh, there's really high cost yeah, in exactly. terms of shipping exactly. and the, getting the lay down infrastructure for, for this. And, uh, but the benefits of uh, this type of farming methods that are quite plenty you could share with us. Yeah, basic, basically, so you can grow all year long. Um, yeah, and, and different type of crops. Different type of crops, but the major advantage mm. is maximizing crop out um, output or the yield. Mm. So for example, if you're doing 10 tons per hectare on open field, mm. so completely exposed farming, inside of a greenhouse, you could do three to four times that same amount wow. in that same land space. Mm. So you can see uh, you're maximizing the output and the yields of the crop, you know, mm. in the same space, um, you know. But the only drawback is the capital, capital, like capital. Uh, you know, crops like tomatoes, tomatoes, um, capsicum, yeah, um, you know, 
chili pepper, mm. habanero, broccoli, mm. just about any and, crop. And basically vegetables. Yeah, basically lots vegetables. vegetables. Yeah. Uh, so we have lots of benefits in terms of the crop and food output that we can get out of uh, this yeah. uh, uh, type of farming. But the uh, challenges looks like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, capital. Yeah, yeah, huge capital. So what, what can be done in order to offset this you know, capital challenges? Yeah, so... Um, you know, being creative. Hmm. For example, we've got greenhouse structures where you don't necessarily have to have a ventilation system. Hmm. You just have an extra roof vent at the top to increase ventilation. Hmm. You know, in, in in the heat, and then um, and then the side covering too, which is anti insect net mesh. You hmm. know, that that too helps with ventilation too when it's really hot. So just a little tweaks here and there make it more cost effective structures. So you don't necessarily have to import all the technology that makes hmm. it really expensive. Right. We just talked about it's, uh, you know, this greenhouse uh, facilities emerging in some parts of Africa and uh, Nigeria. But uh, in terms of weather location and uh, geographic location, where do you think is suitable for this type of, you know, uh, structures, uh, farming to, to, to be carried out? Yeah, so anywhere, anywhere. Uh, really? Yeah, anywhere across the country. Anyone can do greenhouse farming. Um, mm. the, the only drawback would be probably being in the south if you're growing tomatoes because mm. the humidity is quite high here. So okay. what you what would happen here is you probably need a dehumidifier instead of the greenhouse. Yeah, you know to they drag out so much moist. air. But if you're up north, anything mm. north of Abuja, the mm -hmm. humidity is perfect for tomatoes. Mm. And that's why you see a lot of them. They grow in open fields. They don't mm. necessarily have to do greenhouse. But if you're doing greenhouse there in the north, then I mean like that's triple or quadruple the normal yields. Yeah, normal because yields. normally you have even low humidity that supports mm. good tomato growth. Are African farmers, you know, uh, aware of this you know, farming method? Yeah, they are aware, but the people who invest in greenhouse farming are, you know, they're well to do. Hmm. Middle class elites who have enough money to burn and are patient enough to wait out three to four production cycles to recover, the, you know, their capital the cost. cost. So I wouldn't say the typical African farmer, but more like the middle class and the elite farmers. Hmm. Yeah, because we know farming, uh, as it's as well, still having is lots of challenges because the people are trying to move beyond what the Farming was be before to more technological subsistence type of farming in terms of uh, uh, mixed cropping uh, yeah. for fields. But for greenhouses, uh, would you advise for mixed cropping? Um, maybe as a form of research or mm. maybe as a pilot phase. Mm. So maybe you're going to greenhouse for the first time. You might want to plant maybe in an 8 by meters, 8 by 24 meters greenhouse. Mm. Mm. That's eight in terms of acres. Uh, okay, so no, just dimensions, dimensions now. So eight okay. meters in breadth, twenty-four meters in length, which is very small. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's about one hundred and two square meters. Okay, it's quite, it's quite huge. Okay. Um, when, I, when I mean huge, because you can maximize that space okay. and get. You know, so what you would get if you, if you planted that space in mm. open field, instead of a greenhouse, greenhouse. you probably get triple or double, triple, double the output. You know. Yeah. So, back to the question again. You're yeah, asking. A mix cropping. Mix cropping. Yeah. So yeah. I could do. Um, capsicum and tomatoes inside of the same greenhouse itself. Mm. Um, so an 8 by meters, 8 by 24 meters greenhouse will have six beds. So I could do three beds capsicum and not three beds tomatoes inside. Mm. What about the people who are like, looking to go into you know, small scale operations, uh, you know, like having something, you know, uh, like your household vegetable patches, uh, backyard patches? Uh, yeah, so okay. is, it, is it possible? Yeah, it's if possible. You, or possible. What would you require? Um, not in much, just really, I mean, it just depends on the space of your backyard. Mm -hmm. If you've got maybe 100 meters square, um, 100 square meters, so we can put 5 meters as the breadth mm. and then um, 20 meters as the length. Mm. And then we can put like two or three beds in it mm. and cultivate maybe some tomatoes, some capsicum. Mm. You know, just, just more as a test phase, you know, yeah. just to see what the output will look like. But yeah, of course, I encourage people to do that, mm. especially as a pilot phase. Wow. Would you encourage, would you encourage it? Do uh, you think if we can start it as individuals on a small scale, you know, with our, maybe in our villages, in our backyards, uh, maybe that can really help, you know, grow the culture of, uh, you know, greenhouse farming yeah. uh, when we go into farming on large scale? Yeah, absolutely. I always advise clients, um, especially those of them who are, you know, quite skeptic about investing so much. So mm. I always tell them, you know, you start small and then you scale up. So, you know, backyard spaces, 100 square meters, mm. you know, you put up something there and then you watch it for one production cycle, which is about six months. Mm. You monitor the yields. The most important thing is understanding the management practices. 
yeah. right, from seeds okay. to planting in nurseries. And these managing practices, are they quite different, you know, on like your open field or the um, greenhouse? Just a bit different. Mm. Just, How? Just very, just slight difference. Maybe in the feeding regimen. Mm. In the feeding regimen and probably irrigation. So if you're doing an open field, you probably won't need irrigation because you're doing it in the rainy season, right? If it was in the dry season, you'd have, you'd have to put drip lines, you know, do some form of plumbing work so you okay. can supply water to the root of the plant. So just you know, a, a, a bit, a bit of a tweak, you know, mm. here and there, and maybe in the feeding regimen, you're supposed mm. to supply the plant uh, maybe some, you know, um, some some liquid, mm. liquid fertilizer. Maybe you're supposed to observe some spraying techniques or some spraying regimen to yeah. spray with pesticide, insecticide. Mm. You know, just just minor, minor tweaks here and there, and and, and all that requires more. <laughs> More time, more efforts, you know, more controlled. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably an expert who's grown these crops instead, instead of a greenhouse. Instead before. of a greenhouse. Yeah. Uh, what about training and capacity building uh, for farming when it comes to greenhouses uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Nigeria? Uh, are we seeing our institutions or where, where are we going to get this, you know, knowledge from? Yeah. So I, in I, terms I, of building the people who will do this as farmers, as experts, as researchers, greenhouse specifically. Yeah, okay, so we've got a couple of research inst institutions. Mm. The famous one in Ibadan, the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. They run okay. trainings all year long for farmers who are interested in going into greenhouse farming. Mm. So that's one. There are also a couple of departments that have sprung up across the country, mm. across universities in the country. And, and uh, qual these are quality, yes. yeah. quality, you know, uh, training, not just yeah. degree, not just certificate yeah, awarding. Exactly. Absolutely. This is, we're talking about farming um, here. There's the University of Agriculture in Abelkuta. They've mm. made giant strides you know, mm. in this regard. So, you know, they're churning out agronomists who, I believe in two or three years' time, will be able to handle a lot of greenhouses across the country. Mm. Because, you know, we still have a limited number of agronomists compared to where, where you know, where we want to go we should with be. greenhouse farming. So, it, it will still take time. You know, it's not just going to happen like that. But, yeah. A couple of institutions mm. doing a lot in this regard. All right. Well, I think we've learned quite a bit or two about greenhouse farming and uh, the kind of cost that it require yeah. and effort time. Thank you so much, Patrick Buyakon, yeah, uh, yeah. for coming on the show, Breakfast Central. Always such a pleasure. Uh, right. Pleasure to have you. And perhaps I might have you once again on the show. Thank you so much for coming no in.